Hi everybody, um, welcome to Sunday's uh, on the Biophilic Alternative. My name is Measure Bella Knightsville and I am your Sunday host. I am going to talk a little bit about um, uh, manifestation and um, what would be some of the keys to uh, having a spell work or some of the things that would make a spell not work. In particular, I'm going to be work, working with one concept, um, the concept of um, water and our emotional state. Uh, we all know um, when we're working with uh, the elements uh, on our altar um, or the four main um watchtowers uh, of a magic circle we're working with the four elements and that is air fire water and earth now um, when talking about the element of water water is associated with emotion and um, I think uh, how most of us found our natural talent in, and how most people in general find their natural talent if they are uh, a natural witch or um, maybe they've just discovered their natural power. And that generally turns comes from a place, unfortunately, of when we're angry. Uh, I'm talking about when we're young or when we, we're starting out and we don't know anything about the path even in general. It's kind of like um, uh, down here in Texas it's called um, basically giving someone oho and there are certain things that you do so that you're not um, uh, a receiver of someone's jealousy or anger or um, <clears throat> ugly vibes basically projected against you. Those are forms of magic. And most people, they don't have to be magical. They just have to have that power of emotion. And that power of emotion aimed at a particular thing or um, person because it's made them angry or jealous or some of the uh, lower vibrations but something that would respond in an extreme emotional response from them and it is very directed and focused well, that's what we naturally do in magic we um, build our energy we try to keep that energy in the um, vibration of which the working needs to be attained from and we project it and with the power of our intention and will and we try to manipulate the energy to bring us our desired results. It just seems to be that it is more easily done when it is done in a lower vibration at first and maybe that may be where witches got uh, a bum rap in the early days. Maybe that was part of the problem was that um, that is the easiest um, one to actually see the result. I don't think it's the only one that we ever throw out there if we're, we don't know even that we're a practicing witch um, because I think that when we come from a place of love, sometimes it is not quite so noticeable the cause and effect. And it's easier to give credit to maybe a higher power, a God, Jesus, you know, all the different things that they might come into play. Um, and so when we're working with emotion, um, <clears throat> and the natural cause and effect that comes from that, it just seems to be that when you're angry at someone and you project something at something and then so that, that something happens, it is easier for you to make the connection that you may have had something uh, 
personally responsible for what that was that happened. Um, it's easiest to make the correlation. So, emotion becomes one of the triggers of the vibration and it sets the tone of the energy that you're using when you go to do any magical working. There's been a lot of debate I've, I've heard um, on some of the channels that I have been on and some of the, um, it's not really debate, just people mentioning that, well, you don't have to do a magic circle and you don't have to do this and you don't have to do that. Well, you don't have to do anything, but a magic circle is, the first thing it does is takes you into a different place. You're cutting yourself out of time and space and you're putting yourself in a different dimension. It's very critical for having a very successful spell. So that is a part of putting your mind where it needs to be in a state of meditation and focus on the workings that you're fixing to perform. It's sort of a tool in and of itself. Um, the magic circle is something that you are resurrecting, but it becomes a tool and an aid in your workings. Um, it has a very important function. Does everything you have to do have to have a magic circle? No, not everything you do. But everything you do within a magic circle will make it more powerful because it's a magic circle that you've uh, performed around it and resurrected in it. Um, so... Why would um, you come to a place and you go and you do your spell work and you can be very successful? And then you say, well, that spell was so successful. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do the same spell and I'm going to create the same thing and I'm going to do it. And you do, but that time it just fizzles out. It doesn't, maybe it gives you some result, but nothing as spectacular as the first time around. And you think of, well, I thought it was a successful spell. Why did it work the first time, but not the second time? Why is, what's missing from, from the performances of the two spells, even though the spell itself is identical? That would be working with the element of water. <laughs> um, it can also be working with the element of fire as well, too, because that's drive and will. But more so, um, you can have drive and will while you're performing a spell in, in both of those spells, and drive and will can be the same, but still something goes wrong. Well, usually what goes wrong in that spell work is the uncontrolled emotion. Now, I don't mean uncontrolled in the sense that you're falling apart, you're, you're a basket case, or you know, you're stressed out, or whatever. But I mean that you didn't put yourself in an emotional state to bring that vibration to the right pathway of energy. And that becomes the importance of the element of water. Water and emotion are hand in hand. Water encompasses all of the emotion. And there is a lot of science now that backs up the element of water. Um, in the movie, the documentary, um, <clears throat> what the bleep do you know and um, how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go kind of thing um, there was a study done on water and Dr. Emoto he performed these um, I don't know if you'd call it an, it was an experiment because he was a doctor and he would take water from different places around the world and he would um, quick flash freeze them in nitrogen and then examine the crystals. 
that were formed out of these waters. He would take water from um, pure lakes and streams. He would take the water before and after um, Buddhist monks bless the water with their love and intention. Um, he would take water that was um, infused with thoughts of love. Um, he would write words and thoughts and feelings on different water and he would actually freeze these and the crystals would form all these beautiful crystals. And when they did negative thoughts, negative energy at the water, it would become extremely ugly and malformed um, and no real crystal shape at all. So this was the first of, of what was going on with water and Dr. Emoto actually was able to show that even though water is not considered um, like humans are considered, that we have a spirit inside of us. Water can, can has a spirit. It has an energy. And that energy molds and forms into the vibrations that you put into it. Well, the the main thought that processes out of that is that, that the human body is over 70% water. And if we're over 70% water and we infuse ourselves with negativity or we're inundated with stress and we are, maybe we have a lot of negative energy being bombarded at us. Uh, maybe we are bombarding ourselves with the negative energy by watching a lot of violence or um, the news, um, video games. Um, uh, I know this is controversial, but even certain musics and things like that. If it, it depends on how it affects you, how... Um, I don't necessarily think that there's a music that is bad. I think that if you take a 60, 70 year old man or woman and you bombard them with the younger generation's music that they don't like and it causes an irritation to them to just listen to it, then that's something that they should not listen to because it's affecting their field, their water, their energy. It's affecting everything about them. When we gravitate to things that we love and say that person loved the symphony music, Okay, well then that would put them in a better emotional state. And their water in their body would become beautiful crystals. If that same 60, 70 year old person loved gangster rap music, because the emotion is different and they love it, then that would form a different kind of crystal that may be just as beautiful. It's not necessarily that one is bad and one is negative. It, it, one is negative to the um, person. It's just how the person sees the incident or the situation or the music or the video games. If you get great pleasure from things, um, we're not, I don't know that they've done the study yet whether or not one person thinks it's negative and the next person thinks it's positive, whether that changes the water and influences it in, in a different way. <clears throat> but now we have from another study, and I posted it on um, uh, my Facebook page, Magibella Night Spells. Um, it has uh, a new study that came out that that water has a memory 
And this is some of the things that prove that magic really does it work and it does exist. And it is the science, some of the science coming out that actually validates what we do and how we do it. They had water and when they would take a drop and they would put it on a slide of a slide to go under the microscope and this is not forming any crystals like Emoto did it was um, literally putting it just drops of water when they got six different people to all place the drops of water on a slide for a microscope slide they would drop the water at the exact same time all six of them and they kept doing this over and over and over again. All at the same time, all at the same place. When they examined the water, each person's water droplet that was placed at the same time from the same water source, all were different. But what was the same was if you looked at all the water droplets done by the single person, they were all extremely similar. That shows that our personal vibrations affect what's going on at, right around us and whatever is in our energy field. It affects water and water has that memory and we've changed the vibration of water. So, if we change the vibration of water, and water has the memory, we also are changing the effects of the energy it fields around us as well, too. And it vibrates from how we're vibrating. And that is the science behind our craft. It is about how we are vibrating, and why we work so hard, why people should be um, doing a lot to um, handle stress, handle the negative emotions. Um, if your job is something that is killing you, you need to change it. It is how we, we change everything in our field. It's why 15 minutes of meditation every day, 30, even better. But if you're doing these things on a regular basis, how it changes the whole environment inside your body. If it's changing the whole environment inside your body, it's changing all of your energy field around you. And if you're trying to do a magic spell, it's going to change the vibration of that magic spell. So when you're trying to do a negative spell, something that would require anger or hostility, well, then it doesn't really matter if you're controlling your stress or not because that would actually focus and make that spell stronger in a negative way. But if you're trying to do and bring about something very positive to yourself, this is how Law of Attraction works. And this is why they say if you're vibrating negative, you start getting negative. But if you're vibrating positive, you start getting positive things in your life. So it's basic law of attraction, it's basic um, energy work in spells, it's basic intention and focused um, perspective. And that's the difference between when you have a very successful spell and when you have a very <laughs> floppy spell. Look to your vibration, look to your energy, <coughs> and work on clearing yourself before you go to your altar to do that magic working, try to raise your vibration into whatever makes you happy or um, positive or whatever emotion that you're going to need to trigger the type energy that you're going to need to work the spell. That is the key to the successful spell. And the more you can raise that vibration to whatever level, whatever energy working that you're doing, that's going to make a, the biggest difference in your outcome. You still have to have your focus and you still have to have a lot of other components in there. But that one is going to be key to driving it home. Is the ability to um, be paying attention 
to the state your emotions are in when you start working that spell. A lot of times when we're seasoned at what we're doing, the very act of sitting at the altar and starting to perform the spell puts us in a meditative state that we already vibrate into. But if you're really uh, had a very crazed day and you've had a lot of negative stuff coming at you, you really want to be very focused on, okay, I need to change that before I head to my altar to try to change the situation that's been happening around me. You want to change your vibration to change all of the things that are starting to come to you. Um, <clears throat> I've had a week of that and I've had some really great uh, manifestations starting to happen from some spell work I performed several weeks ago. And it was starting to come and, and was it was just really, really wonderful things coming to me. But at the same time, I was getting these negative crap out of nowhere. And I was like, where in the hell is that coming from? Well, it was because I was stressed at work. And there were situations that were happening that were not truly to do with me. But I was getting some of the negative backlash from it. It was causing stress in my life. And that stress was where that off the wall and crazy stuff was also hitting me with all of this wonderful, successful manifestation that I was doing from spell work. So... Just keep in mind that you really have to have a, a um, you have to really tune in to how you're feeling and how you're doing because your emotion has everything to do with the type of energy that you're going to attract when you go to do that spell work. And a lot of times, again, it is the difference between having that successful manifestation or having those <laughs> really horrible results that you learn or what the hell did I do that it came at me like that? So just be mindful of those emotions and learn that the emotion has everything to do with driving that vibration. Thanks, and y'all have a wonderful Sunday, and blessed be. I, I wanted to add a little bit to the video just to let y'all know that I'm going to put in the down bar um, links to... Um, uh, my YouTube uh, account, which is Magibella Night Spells on uh, YouTube, but also um, also Magibella Night Spells on Facebook as well on a page. And uh, on those two, you will find um, my liked videos. I do have playlists for um, the science that goes further into... Um, looking into water and how science is actually explaining a lot of things that we do. When you do this, this science can actually help really change your world and how you relate to yourself as well as you relate to others and understand what negative emotions are really doing to you and what positive emotions are doing to you as well. Um, uh, the videos speak for themselves and they're at the uh, top of my liked list on uh, my YouTube channel and they should be very close to the top on Majibella Night Spells. So either way that you want to do it, um, I will put my full spelling of the name so that you can um, go there and see um, the videos that I am referring to. And I just want to thank y'all and y'all have a blessed Sunday and... Mary Park. Bye.